before and after everyone. And in the sun, yes. In 1966, Mike Nichols presented his first film as a director, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Adapted by Ernest Lehman from Edward Albee's original 1962 play, the film featured Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, George Siegel, and Sandy Dennis in a story that challenged social norms and censorship, sparking widespread debate and controversy among viewers and critics alike. Well, uh, and this one time, this boy went with her. In the 1966 film, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor deliver powerful performances as George and Martha, a couple whose marriage is characterized by sharp wit and biting dialogue. Their interactions reveal a deep-seated emotional codependence, which is exacerbated by their heavy drinking. The film delves into the complexities of their relationship, exposing the raw and often painful dynamics of love and resentment. As the night progresses, the couple engages in psychological games that unveil their deepest fears and desires, leading to an intense climax that forces both George and Martha to confront the reality of their situation. The portrayal of these characters by Burton and Taylor has been lauded for its authenticity and emotional depth, making the film a significant work in the history of cinema. Houseboy! Then you must have made it, yes? Yes? Somebody's lying around here, somebody's not playing the- In the 1966 film, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, the character dynamics are significantly influenced by George's academic position and his relationship with Martha, whose father is the university president. This power imbalance and proximity to authority bring a unique tension to their interactions. George, being an associate professor, faces the pressure and expectations that come with Martha's connection to the university's leadership through her father. This dynamic contributes to the volatile and contentious nature of their marriage as seen throughout the film. Their interactions often reflect the underlying struggles for respect and autonomy, making their relationship a central focus of the narrative. The film explores the complexities of personal ambition, professional stagnation, and the intricate dance of power within their partnership. In the 1966 film, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? The plot unfolds over the course of an evening at George and Martha's home, a middle-aged couple associated with a small university. After attending a faculty party, Martha, who is the daughter of the university's president, invites a younger couple, Nick, a new biology professor, and his wife, Honey, to their home for a nightcap. What begins as a cordial invitation quickly devolves into an intense and revealing night. As the alcohol flows, George and Martha engage in bitter verbal battles in front of their guests, using Nick and Honey as pawns in their psychological games. Throughout the night, the line between reality and illusion blurs, secrets are disclosed, and the characters' vulnerabilities are exposed. The film is a study of the complexities of marriage and the deep-seated fears and desires that often lie hidden beneath the surface of interpersonal relationships. To you? Yes! Oh, beautiful. My God. The 1966 film, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, directed by Mike Nichols and starring Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, is distinguished in the history of the Academy Awards. It was nominated for every eligible category, an achievement it shares with the 1931 film Cimarron. This recognition underscores the film's excellence across all aspects of its production, from acting and directing to technical categories, reflecting the Academy's acknowledgement of its overall quality. The film's sweep of nominations is a rare occurrence, highlighting its significance in the cinematic arts. Don't bother me. Well, <laughs> I was asleep. The 1966 film adaptation of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? faced significant casting challenges due to the original play's controversial content. The play, known for its success on stage, contained elements of profanity and sexual themes that were deemed excessively bold for the cinematic audience of the time. This posed a potential barrier to its adaptation into a film. However, Ernest Lehman, the screenwriter, saw potential in the narrative and approached Warner Brothers with a convincing argument. He believed that despite the provocative nature of the play, it was possible to create a film version that would resonate with audiences while staying true to the essence of the original work. Lehman's persuasive skills and vision for the film ultimately led Warner Brothers to greenlight the project, allowing the story to reach a wider audience through the silver screen. 
The film went on to become a classic, remembered for its raw portrayal of human relationships and emotional depth. Really? Uh, probably. And it's all about this nice young couple who comes out of the Middle West. Elizabeth Taylor, initially hesitant to portray Martha in the 1966 film Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, was persuaded by her co-star and husband Richard Burton to accept the role. Despite her reservations about playing a character she considered to be outside her age range, Taylor's performance was ultimately met with critical acclaim. Her portrayal of the brash and complex Martha demonstrated her ability to take on challenging roles that deviated from her glamorous Hollywood image. This casting choice contributed significantly to the film's success, showcasing Taylor's dramatic talent and adding depth to the turbulent relationship depicted between Martha and George, played by Burton. The film, directed by Mike Nichols, became a landmark in cinema for its raw portrayal of a couple's emotional struggles and for pushing the boundaries of what could be depicted on screen at the time. Oh, baby, aren't you something? Well, I've got to find some way to get at you. The production of the 1966 film, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, faced significant challenges, particularly due to the behavior of its leading actors, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. Their habitual late arrivals to the set disrupted the filming schedule. Additionally, their extended lunch breaks further compounded the issue, leaving only a limited amount of time each day for actual shooting. This pattern of delays strained the production's resources and tested the patience and ingenuity of the crew. Despite these obstacles, the film managed to progress, albeit at a slower pace than originally planned, requiring the team to adapt to the unpredictable schedule and make the most of the time available when the lead actors were present. In his directorial debut with the film Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Mike Nichols, then a novice in the field of filmmaking, was presented with a piece of advice that was quite unconventional to assert his authority on the set. He should terminate the employment of someone on the very first day. This guidance led to a decisive action where the first assistant director was let go. This move was not just about establishing dominance, but also set the tone for the production, signaling Nichols' commitment to his vision and the seriousness with which he approached the project. His approach to directing was clear from the outset. He was there to steer the film with a firm hand and a clear vision, ensuring that every aspect of the production aligned with his interpretation of the script and the performances he sought from his actors. Nichols' decision on that first day was a bold statement of leadership, one that would resonate throughout the production and ultimately contribute to the film's success. Oh. What? The 1966 film Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, directed by Mike Nichols, adapted from Edward Albee's play, encountered significant censorship issues prior to its release. The original play featured dialogue that was considered extremely bold and explicit for its time, leading to a clash with the established norms of film content. The production code office responsible for enforcing moral and ethical standards in filmmaking demanded alterations to the film's script. This included the softening of certain lines that were deemed too offensive for the general audience. The filmmakers were faced with the challenge of retaining the essence of the play's intense emotional confrontations while satisfying the requirements of the code. This necessitated a careful reworking of the dialogue to navigate the restrictions imposed, ensuring that the film could reach a wider audience without compromising its dramatic impact. The struggle to preserve the film's authenticity amidst these constraints highlighted the ongoing tension between artistic expression and censorship in cinema during that era. The resolution of these challenges marked a significant moment in the evolution of film content standards. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? thus stands as a notable example of how filmmakers adapted to, and sometimes challenged the censorship rules of their time. Forget it. And I'll bet you your wife's got the widest, most inviting avenue on the whole damn campus. <laughs> the 1966 film Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, directed by Mike Nichols, is notable for its exemption by the Motion Picture Association of America. This exemption was significant because it allowed the film to be released with a warning label concerning its adult language and thematic content. This decision by the MPAA was groundbreaking as it set a new standard for the film industry, allowing movies to explore mature and challenging topics without being restricted by the traditional production code. 
The film's release marked a shift in American cinema, paving the way for more open and honest storytelling in Hollywood. And I wrote, I told people at the next table what the boy had said, and then they laughed, and then more 